Hey everyone, it's Zano here, and today we're going to be answering one simple question, how to win a Bellatro run. I've had many comments from players who are a little stuck on getting a run going or complete. In this video, I'm going to cover five quick tips to simply win a run in Bellatro. Then we are going to play a run together on a fresh profile with the red deck implementing those tips. So let's jump into it. Tip number one, establish your win condition and hand type and fish for it. Often players get too caught up going for whatever hand the deck deals them. However, through your jokers, tarot cards, spectral cards, and more, you should focus on building towards one or a small collection of ideal hands. Once that is established, fish for that hand using discards or even sometimes playing garbage just to get that one ideal hand. Oftentimes, through your jokers, one of your big hands is going to far outscore five decent hands that your jokers don't really align with. Tip number two, focus on getting useful jokers that add chips and molt early. This allows you to build an economy by, by one-shotting blinds. And while those utility jokers like four fingers can be fun, the easiest way to win a run is to establish solid points early and win rounds quickly. Some of the most powerful jokers for the first couple of antis are the lusty, greedy, wrathful, and gluttonous jokers that add four molt per specific suit. While these don't scale incredibly well for the late game, it makes the first few antis a breeze and really can allow you to build up your economy. Tip number three, fish for one-shotting the first blind and two-shotting the second blind in the first ante. This is to add as much economy early as possible as you possibly can. Um, you want to be able to buy things in those first couple of shot shops, and this is really the easiest way to do it. The best way to do it is to play a high-end straight, high-end flush, or a solid full house. Tip number four, you want jokers with multiplying molt. These are jokers like hologram, duo, vampire, etc. These are by far the most powerful jokers in the game and allow you to scale with the large antis towards the end of the game. In general, I see a lot of confusion on Reddit, in the Discord, and on YouTube between adding and multiplying molt. With many players choosing to play, let's say, a plus 27 molt on a fortune teller over a times 2 molt of a duo card. Doing some simple math, as long as you had 27 base molt going into that joker, the times 2 is going to be greater. And the bigger thing here is that duo will be able to scale as you get more base molt by leveling up your hands or adding different kinds of jokers or adding molt enhancements to your existing cards or a whole host of ways while tarot will continue adding one or fortune teller that is will continue adding one every time you add a tarot card duo itself will always be times in by two so as you scale duo is scaling with you adding molt is good early but times in that molt especially with several jokers doing times in is going to lead to much much larger scores it's how you beat the game it's how you end up getting crazy high scores in the millions hundreds of millions billions all that good jazz and final tip number five, and I'm very much guilty of this, read the boss blind. This is an issue. I constantly forget it. Everyone constantly forgets it. But as soon as you're able to see that boss blind as you're clicking on the, on the small blind, read it, prepare for it, and get ready. Ideally, if it's a blind that's really going to hurt your run, let's say you've been playing all diamonds and diamonds are debuffed, figure out a way to re-roll it. And if you can't, maybe make a few cards that can help you pivot for that boss. So... Let's jump into a run together and let's implement these tips and I'll break down exactly how to win at Bellatro. All right, so I'm really gonna talk through every single little bit of this run, hopefully break down every single move I'm doing so you can kind of follow along and implement this in your own run and hopefully win one. So this is a completely fresh profile. I'm starting with the base jokers, nothing unlocked. Let's jump into it. So first of all, implementing that first tip right away we have a king, king, jack, 10, 10, 9. We could either go with a queen here to get the king through 9 straight, or we could go for the diamond flush. It's usually a little bit easier to go for a diamond flush. We're going to discard these and see what we get. Okay, we got another king. Uh, we'll discard all these. This. Okay. Now we kind of just go for that diamond flush, and then we get a queen. You know, sometimes this is going to happen where you're like, dang, the card I needed is now coming out. 
Um, but it happens. There we go. We finally got the straight. We used all our discard discards. But the important thing is we left three hands, which is going to give us three extra dollars on top of the small blind reward. So now we have ten dollars, which means if we want, we can grab Obelisk right now, or we can grab Fibonacci. So my thought process here is Obelisk is great. It's exactly what I was talking about about Timesy Molt, but it is a little hard to play around. Um, I think it's a card that's Maybe if this is your first run that you're trying to win, I wouldn't go with. Fibonacci is very basic. It's going to plus that molt. And like we said, we want to add molt early to just get through these blinds. So that's what, what I'm going to do. And we're going to move to the next one. So we want to play aces, two, three, fives, and eights. It's going to give, give us a ton of molt. And we almost have a straight here. We just need to draw an ace or a six. We also have two pair if we really need to play it. Oh, we did draw a six. Well, I'm a silly goose. Also, reading your cards, that's important. I'm pretty sure this 5-3-3 three, three will do it. Probably will. So when you have a card like this, Fibonacci, this is what I'm talking about. It adds molts with 5s, 3s, 8s, aces, and 2s. I'm going to fish for those cards and just play them because adding that molt is going to be so much easier than playing all these random hands. Um, we look at this shop. There's nothing I really love. Maybe I'm going to grab an Arcana pack to make more... Three fives, eights, twos, aces, and whatnot. And uh doesn't look like we have anything to do it right here. Eh. We can maybe make some more tens, even though that's really not part of our win condition. I think we just use a temperance. I know it's three dollars, but and it makes the arcana not a complete waste. We go to the next one. Alright, diamond cards are debuffed. And that means that Fibonacci will not hit on diamond cards so you have to be careful of that but at the end of the day we don't even need to use that one we drew this full house that's gonna have tons of Fibonacci in it and see we're already at 4,000 points we're gonna breeze through the first couple of antis so next spectral packs I'm just gonna say this right here spectral packs are the most powerful cards in the game outside of jokers I absolutely every time I see them in the shop I go for it they do incredible things. So right now I could destroy one card, add four enhanced number cards. Eh. I think what I'll do here is either add a foil, holographic, or polychrome to one of the cards I'm playing, or just make everything one suit. I think we're gonna do that. Make it a little bit easier to get flushes. We now have 20 diamonds in our deck. Right here, Emily. Would be interesting to get 20 bucks, but I have lots of 8s, 5s, and 3s, which I don't want to destroy because of Fibonacci. So instead, I'll destroy one and get more enhanced cards, which hopefully were Fibonacci cards. I didn't <laughs> get to see all of them. We'll play this one. And right away, I'm just not even going to think about it. I'm going to discard cards that aren't going to be helping, that are not going to help Fibonacci. So, we play this. We have a steel card from using that spectral pack. We're off to the races. And again, we're one-shotting these blinds, which means we get more money because we have more hands remaining. I'll buy the strength to hopefully make more Fibonacci cards. Buy this Arcana pack. I think here it would somewhat make sense, you know, destroy these two cards. Or it would make sense just to grab an extra Joker. But I'm going to destroy these two because Fibonacci is really carrying us and we don't, we don't need that extra Joker. We'll play through this big blind. We will make, you know, what, let's make an extra ace and an extra three. And then right away, we have our full house. We play it. We play fib. And again, we're at 3,000 points. We unlocked a joker, which you can't see behind my face cam. I'm sorry. All right. Mystic would be pretty good. Campfire is one of the jokers we talked about earlier. It allows you to create molt. Now, Campfire, again, kind of like Obelisk, is a little bit hard to play around because it's a very specific condition that can reset. In this case, it resets every single round. But I am going to add it because we want that times molt at some point. Maybe not right this second. We're good. But at some point, we're going to need it. We are going to discard all of these cards. They don't help us because they're not Fibonacci cards. It's just a way of the world right now. Um, Here... We can play this flush. It's got two Fibonacci's in it. It may not one-shot, but 
it utilizes a little bit of what we're going for. We're then going to discard one more time. We have, oh, we got one more discard. Let's see what we get. All right, there we go. Full house full of Fibonacci. We'll be all good. One thing I really do like about Fibonacci specifically when looking for early cards that add molt is that no one boss line is really going to hit all your Fibonacci cards. All right, so looking at this shop right here, Bean can be solid, but it is, it's not going to be used a ton. Plus one hand size is a fantastic voucher that when I have the economy to do so, I love grabbing it, and we did. So we have the full, or we have strength. I think we'll use strength right now to make two more fives. Then we have another Arcana pack to open up. We can have Temperance, add seven bucks, or we can just get rid of two more cards that are not Fibonacci and thin out that deck. So read the hand tag. We get $7, but we miss a shop. I think it's worth just playing this one out. If we get a two, we have a straight. We do. Only one card in there isn't Fibonacci, and it's got a Molt on it. So we're at the point where we're no longer one-shotting hands, which means maybe we need to start utilizing our campfire, utilizing another Joker to help us out. So we have Zany Joker, which pretty solid, as just 12 Molt can be pretty helpful. I think we'll buy and use Judgment. And there we got Walkie Talkie, which makes 10s and 4s now pretty viable. I don't want to skip too many um, in this run because I really don't recommend skipping to new players. But this is a tag I would think about. I have two Joker spots available. It fills those two. It could be okay uh, Jokers. So I'm going to do so. We get Odd Todd, which is going to help get us some chips. And Pear, which will also help us get some chips. Pretty solid in my book. We're going to discard these three. And we have a four of a kind right here of fives. I think we're going to play that. And we're going to also discard the jack. So here's another little tip. If you're playing four of a kind or let's say two pair, you can use that fifth spot in your hand to discard something you don't want. And these fives are hitting Odd Todd and Fibonacci with each one with each uh, trigger. So really generating a lot of points for us. All right, I think you know, anti-4, I wouldn't hate buying and selling some stuff just to upgrade Campfire a tad. And that's what we're doing here. I think I'll sell Sly Joker and I'll get Splash. And uh, that should round it out. It made it times two. We should be good. Coupon tag, this is another tag I highly recommend skipping um, when it's viable. I'm not going to do so here. I'm just going to play the small blind. But that is a, a really good tag. It allows for a completely free shop. Okay, again, we're just going for those Fibonacci cards, ideally odd cards, because that goes with odd Todd. And we're gonna keep that steel card in steel card in hand to times everything by 1.5. So 29,000, we're way above and beyond where we need to be. We're in a very good spot. Another jumbo spectral pack. Right away when I see that, I almost always gravitate and just go grab it. Wraith. I feel like people sometimes overestimate money in this game. Economy is important. It's not the end-all be-all. And uh, rare jokers are really great. So I'm going to sell Splash. And yes, it's going to cost me $9, but I'm going to get a rare joker. It's ancient. It's not the end-all be-all, but it's a pretty solid one. So now every diamond I play is going to get 1.5. And that is going to change each round. So you have to be wary of it. Uh, we have a diamond flush, so I think even though it's not Fibonacci, we are going to get times 1.5 for each one. It's worth a play. And there we go, 13,000. So it wasn't as much as what we were getting, but we have it. Feel free to utilize it. We're going to save our money a bit here. The plant all face cards are debuffed. This doesn't really affect us because our win condition doesn't revolve around face cards. Right now it's hearts. That's something to be aware of. 
Uh, we have two pair. I'm gonna get rid of this three and hopefully get another five or eight or ace. I'm gonna play it. Actually, I'm gonna play with two fives because they're odd, so odd Todd hits. Keep that steel card in hand because it doesn't trigger if you play it. And there we go, 38,000 points. We're flying right now, we're in a good spot. We could probably get rid of walkie talkie because we really don't need it. And with that said, jumbo buffoon pack, I like grabbing it. It gives you an option of four. And right here, this is fantastic. So if we get hack, re-trigger each played two, three, four, and five. Right now, two, three, and five give us plus eight molt. And then three and five also give us three chips. So this does that twice now. We're gonna sell walkie talkie, which also, which also helps campfire. A lot of things going on here, but hack is going to be massively helpful. I'm also gonna add a permanent hand for the rest of the game with that voucher. It's another great voucher to have. So now aces are still very strong, but I would love threes and fives. Cause you're gonna watch as we play this the aces hit once, but these threes are going to hit twice because of hack. And our score is now getting to the point where it's honestly almost already set up for the end game. Uh, Emperor is fantastic for campfire because it makes two cards that we can then sell. But I actually am going to use a hermit to get the extra seven dollars, considering you know we're already in a good spot with our score. Continuing on to the big blind. We have a nice straight here. I think it's pretty solid to play. And again, Hack is doing quite a bit of heavy lifting here on those threes and fives. Constellation, I believe is the name of this card. This is another one. It's gonna be adding molt for every planet we buy. And I think we're gonna go ahead and take it over Ancient just because it's a little bit easier to get higher. Uh, we'll go ahead and lift straight. It does kind of go a little bit against Campfire because Campfire kind of wants you to buy and sell cards while Constellation you want to use your planet cards, but they're not going that head-to-head -head with one another. We're going to discard all those. We know face cards aren't part of our build, so we do not care that they're face down. We're just going to discard them each and every time. Uh, we have, you know, a pretty solid flush here. I think we'll play that, see how high it gets us. And we still have twos and fives down here. Doesn't matter. Another $12. We're going to go ahead and grab the overstock voucher now. That's going to add an extra card in our shop, which is very, very useful. We'll go ahead and play Jupiter. We've been playing a couple diamond flushes. And we'll go next. Now, Campfire is still stuck at one molt, so this will be a good barometer with how much we need to upgrade them for the final boss in this ante. There we go. Three aces, two fives. These get hit with hack. And, you know, 23,000 points with no Campfire. So. Pretty solid, but we probably want to buy and sell a card or two just to help it out. We'll take a look at this Mega Buffoon. Obelisk. We've been playing a lot of full houses. We could maybe build it up at this point in the game. But I don't think we need to. I'm going back and forth now. All right. We're going to because I'm going to show something. When you have a Mega Buffoon pack, so you choose two, but let's say you only want one card. In this case, we only want Obelisk. We're going to sell. I'm then going to choose a different card. Sell that again to get free money. In this case, also upgrade Campfire and then add Obelisk. So the name of the game now will be not to play full houses. We play anything else and we'll be upgrading Obelisk for the final stretch of this game. So an example here is, yes, we have the full house. The full house is sick, but we're just gonna play the two pair. And I miss an opportunity there to discard my jack by when playing that two pair. 
But you know, little mistakes like that, they happen. They don't matter. We'll buy and sell full or uh, earth because we're not gonna be using full houses. Double checking how many times I've played each one. And uh, we move on. Cards are drawn face down after each hand played. So that's an important thing to note. I think we're just gonna play this three of a kind of fives. It's something we haven't done before. Again, we'll help build Obelisk and I think it might get us there. It did. Now campfire is reset. It was pretty high there, so we wanna make sure we get it back up. We'll buy and use High Priestess. And then we're going to sell a couple of cards to get campfire where it needs to be. Absolutely taking the wasteful voucher just to get a few more discards. Reroll the shop once. Buy and use Emperor. Same thing. We're going to sell. We're going to sell. So now campfire is back to times three. We should be all good for this blind. <coughs> uh, so here's a really good example. We have a great straight right here but because it hits nothing it doesn't hit odd todd it doesn't hit fibonacci it doesn't hit hack it's not going to get many points the only thing it will do is grow obelisk a little bit and that you know that in and of itself might be worth it and we are going to play it well <laughs> that's only four cards to the street you also need to click on the nine um but the example there would have been it helps obelisk and it did because we played high card but it wasn't the street i was trying to play but anyway, let's go now fish for the cards we really want, which are, you know, fives, aces, threes, maybe even twos. Yeah, we'll, we'll just play the three of a kind right here. And there we go, 74,000. Again, Obelisk is just getting better and better every once in a while. In my case, way too much. I'm going to check and make sure we're nowhere close to playing a full house which would reset it. We're gonna buy and sell. We have plenty of money to do this, buy and sell, and just get campfire a tad bit higher. <clears throat> so as you can see, our score without these, you know, basically divide it by four and divide it by two. So it, we would be nowhere close to hitting these blinds. This is why multiplying your mult is so important in this game and why I made it one of the tips we talked about earlier in this video. Two pair right here with fives and threes. That's fantastic. We'll go ahead and play that. Again, so they're all re-triggering because of hack, and that's why I'm staying with the threes and fives over the ace. And then I'm not playing the two because Odd Todd doesn't affect the two. And chips sometimes get, you know, underrepresented in this game. Everyone's talking about multiplying your molt, including myself, but you need chips to help even that out because you have to remember your chips are times in that red box. Uh, nothing here. We can open up an Arcana. We have tons of money. And we can go ahead and make a steal card. Now, sometimes there's a little bit of debate. Do you steal cards you don't use or do you steal cards you use? I tend to actually steal cards I do use. And the reason for that is they're more likely to be in my hand. And sometimes when you're fishing, you end up with more cards in your hand than you need. And now those steal cards can be put off to the side. But if I have to use them, I can use them. So it's a little bit more of in-depth strategy going on there. Okay, we have a four of a kind, which we haven't really played almost at all. Yeah, we've only played once. We'll go ahead and play that. This should go crazy. And we don't really need the gold from keeping that five in our hand. Okay, 200,000 points. That is has what we're probably going to need for the boss line so we're in a good spot this is reset so let's buy and sell buy and sell buy and sell and then even re-roll once and see if there's anything else we can do there we'll go to the next round forces one card to always be selected we'll deal with that nothing too crazy we'll play the small blind um We'll just play two pair right here and kind of see where we're at with that. Yep, 72,000. And now it's two pair gain a little too close to being our most played hand. Nope, still at four. We're all good. We're going to buy and sell. Even going to re-roll just to buy and sell a few more cards. 
and get campfire really in the solid spot, spot so we don't have to worry. We'll go ahead and play this so we get our final shop. We'll discard all these. Again, fishing for the hand we want. Um, we'll play this two pair and keep two steel cards in hand. These do do a little bit of heavy lifting here. Yeah, put us in a really good spot. And now we're on to the boss blind. We're already there. We are running the game at four times speed just so this video doesn't drag on forever for you guys. Reroll one more time, especially if your goal is just to win a run. Don't be afraid to spend a lot of your money in the final blind. All right, baseball card joker. We have two uncommons, so he would times this by 1.5 and this by 1.5. But really the only card we want to replace right now is Odd Todd. And we don't really want to do that. We want the chips. I mean, we could replace Obelisk, but that's actually not enough. 1.5 times 1.5 is under 2.6, so... We're just going to go ahead, go face this bell. Luckily, it didn't pick a card we want to play later. That stinks because you really want to keep that in hand. But we'll kind of use this as a throwaway. Just play those together. Only 6,000 points. All right. Well, it picked our five. So let's play this two pair with the aces and make it a little bit of a big hand. And then let's toss away this four. And there we go. We beat it. First try. That is how to win a Bellatro run. I really hope this video was helpful. If you guys need more feedback, if there's anything specific, I can help. Comment down below your questions. I'll reply to them. And if necessary, I'll make another video. Really hope this guide was what you guys were looking for. And we'll see you for the next one very soon.